<laughs> oh, all right. Hey, I think I think I got some things figured out. I think we got some uh, some better stuff going on. I'm gonna kind of start over. I see I've got some some people that were here earlier, but I want to make sure I, I just deleted the old one. It looked so horrible. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, that I get this lesson looking good for you. Um, so uh, bear with me. I, I got YouTube folk. I got Facebook folks. If you got questions, throw them down. Uh, let me kind of talk a little bit and explain, you know, what I want to explain. And then absolutely, I'm always happy to answer questions. So again, this this stems back to uh, some students uh, recently having having some trouble with the whole idea of uh, you know getting lost in the 12 bar form. Okay, so as you start playing the blues, or if you're new to guitar in general, it's really easy to sort of get lost in that 12 bar blues form. And I remember when I was, uh, when I was in college, <clears throat> I was a studio jazz major uh, at USC, and, but I didn't really grow up playing jazz. I grew up playing blues and rock, and yeah, I, I heard some and I played a little bit here and there, but it wasn't my thing. It wasn't my bread and butter. It wasn't my wheelhouse, as we say. So for a lot of the other students that, you know, played tons of jazz and had played all these tunes, when it came to something like rhythm changes, which is a, again, a standard set of changes, much like the 12 bar blues, when it came to stuff like that, they could just solo over this stuff all day. It was really hard for me. I had to listen a lot more. I had to practice a lot more simply because this stuff was new to me. Okay, and so I would get lost in the chords. So I absolutely get it. Getting lost in the chords is definitely a, a drag. So I wanna give you some ideas on ways that you can improve sort of your ability to just feel when it's time to change, okay? And of course, it's gonna come back to counting. It always does. But if you count this, count the bars, okay, and keep track of where you're at, there, a, a time is going to come when you don't need to. And very simply, you will absolutely know when that time is because if you aren't sure whether or not you need to count, then you need to count. You will be very, very sure when you don't need to count. And when you get to that point, it's gonna be great because when that happens, it allows you to take a little bit higher level view of, of the music as a whole. And that just makes it that much easier for you to play in solo because you don't, have to spend so much of your brain concentrated on, you know, what chord am I on? What, what chord's coming next? Where am I in, in the form? All that kind of stuff, right? So, uh, all right, let's, uh, I see some, I see some comments. Give me a, just give me a, a heck yeah if you're here or a hey or anything. I see we got some folks. I got Facebook on this one and I got YouTube on this one. Uh, everything I think is, is going better. I, I had to tweak some settings, um, and, and actually I was, I was pushing too much. <laughs> Who knew you could have too much bandwidth? Uh, but I was, uh, it looks like I was, I was overdoing it. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in answer to your question, David, about Sir guitars being significantly better than G and L's, they are not significantly better. But they are significantly enough different, um, and and I can I can get into the differences between the different kinds of guitars. But for me, Sirs just just feel really good. I do have uh, I got a GNL right there. I got a Fender right there. I got Gibsons. I've I, I got plenty. Um, it's just it this one is my number one. My wife actually bought it for me uh, as an engagement gift before we were married, so it has sentimental value as well as just feeling really really great in my hands. Uh, okay, cool. Hello from Nashville, Kevin. Nice to see you. I love Nashville. Wonderful town. Wonderful town. Okay, so the first, so if you're, I'll say if you're more of a beginner, or if you find that you get lost when you play a 12-bar blues, let me give you some ideas. Uh, the first one, you know, as you can probably imagine, right, it's, it's the good old blues in E. Any, any kind of rhythm figure will do the job, but you have to keep track and you have to do it out loud. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three. And then it's time 
to move to the four chord. One, right? Or if you want to keep track, five, R5, six, back to the one chord, seven, eight, nine is the five chord, ten is the four chord, eleven, one. 12. And then of course I would start again. One. Okay, it's a 12 bar blues. So when we get to the end, you gotta go around again. Now, most students will make the same mistake, which is they'll play that all the way through one time and be like, yes, I got it, cool. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you don't got it yet. Playing that around one time is a great start. But what happens is when you play a blues, you're gonna play that pattern eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 times, right? So don't just play it once and think you got it because where you're gonna to start to get lost is when it's on the third or the fifth or the sixth or the seventh time around. Now, is that gonna get a little bit tedious? Possibly, possibly. It's, it's more than tedious, it's, it's, it gets difficult when you concentrate. If you're actually concentrating, one, two, three, four, two, two, you know, and keeping track of the bars, right? And if you're concentrating, that is taxing, that's tiring. And yes, you may get tired, but you have to try and concentrate and be able to get through at least five or six choruses of that without getting lost then you have it, okay? If you can get through it once, that's really not, not gonna do you much good, okay? Um, now another thing, and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be that basic blues, right? You can do like a, a chord, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, five, three, four, Six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, three, four, nine, two, three, four, ten, two, three, four, eleven, two, three, and twelve, three, four, and one, two, and three, four, through, two, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three. Right? Now, if you don't know a strum pattern, let's say, I'm gonna turn off my overdrive here a little bit, but let's say you don't, let's say you don't have a strum pattern yet. Fine. One and two and three and four and one, two and three. Strum them all every time, every beat. That's fine. I would rather see you strum on every single count than mess up and try to get fancy with it. Okay, so at this stage of the game, do that, right? Just do one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, three, four, seven, two, three. Okay, and I'm not gonna belabor it. I think you get the idea. But don't worry about like, how should I strum it? Strum every count, <laughs> it's fine. When you get, when that gets comfortable, the only difference between strumming every single count and a strum pattern is you miss a couple of times. You start to relax and you start to miss every once in a while and before you know it, you have a pattern. Don't worry about it, don't stress about it, don't even think about it. Strum every one, get the rhythm down, get your place in the 12 bar form. There's gobs of time to worry about strum patterns and rith rhythm figures and riffs and all that kind of stuff. If you don't really, really have that 12 bar blues, you know, in you and you don't feel those changes and you don't just kind of know where you are, a lot of the other stuff is gonna be, is gonna be hard. And I don't want it to be hard because it shouldn't be hard. <laughs> it should be simple. Most of that stuff is fairly straightforward, okay? Um, now, another thing that you can do, by the way, and a lot of people say, well, you know, you should just play along with songs. And that's true, you can do that, unless it's not a 12 bar blues. 
And that happens sometimes with songs. Uh, so I tend to suggest jam tracks where you are sure that it's a 12 bar blues, okay? And you can know if it's a, you know, hopefully if it's a jam track and it says this is a 12 bar blues. If you're looking it up on YouTube, for example, um, and it says 12 bar blues in A, then you can assume it's a 12 bar blues in A. Um, I have uh, I have a set of jam tracks called five by five jam tracks uh, on my website that are, you know, five 12 bar blues in five different fields and five different keys. So it's five fields and five, five fields times five keys. And they're all 12 bar blues. So you, you can play along with them. You just have to be sure that they are a 12 bar blues. For example, this one, um, uh, this one I was, I just was playing uh, as, as I came in today. Um, this one's an A flat, which I know is kind of an odd key, but it's kind of a um, cross cut saw type of vibe. Three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three. So just strum along with it. Don't worry about it. You don't need any kind of fancy thing. Seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four, nine, two, three, four, ten, two, three, four, one, eleven, and twelve. All right, and I don't think that actually went to the five chord um, on that on that very last little bit. Um, let me pick a different one. I think this one's an A. A flat's kind of a weird key. I think this is a straight blues. It's a little faster. Seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four, nine, two, three, four, ten, two, three, four, eleven, two, three, four, twelve, two, three, four, one, two, four, three. Right? You just play along. Don't, uh, again, don't worry about what kind of rhythm figure or anything you're playing. Just strum it all the time. If it gets to be too obnoxious, then miss some. Or put your hand, you know, you can mute, like you can take your right hand and on the downs mute things out. Two, three, four, two, three. And you kind of get almost like a Stevie Ray Vaughan type of type of shuffle with that. It could be a, it could be like a slow blues. Um, let me see if I have a, a slow blues here really quick. Uh, yeah, let's see. Here's a slow blues. Um, Slow blues in A. Two. One. Two. Three. Four. Three. Two. Two. Three. Four. Three. Two. Three. Four. Four. Two. Three. Four. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, uh, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight. Right? You get the idea. You know, you just play along. And and that's that's to me, that's what this is supposed to be. It's supposed to be fun. You're supposed to play music. The more you play music, the better at it you get. But if you're trying to somehow you know, study your way into learning the 12 bar blues. I, I just don't think that really works out. I think you really just have to play, you know, and whether that be with a jam track or by yourself or maybe just with one other person, doesn't really matter. You just kind of have to be very cognizant that that is the thing that you are working on and play. And, and as you play, that's the thing that you focus on. And you'd be surprised, you know, if you really, really pay attention to it. I used to just put on the radio and play with every song that came on. You know, that was, you know, this was, of course, in the in the before times, <laughs> before the internet, you know. But I did. I just turn on the radio and play for two hours, just whatever song came on. I try to figure out 
what the chords were and just strum along. I couldn't play lead. I couldn't do anything. I could barely even figure out what the chords were most of the time. But I just played, and pretty soon I got better at it. And and I realized that that's, that would be a very tedious way to learn. And, and I, I would never suggest that because we have better things. We have jam tracks. We have... YouTube, we have all, you know, Facebook, we have all these great avenues. But the bottom line is that you're still going to have to sort of focus on this thing and play for a while. Okay, um, my comments have long since scrolled off the page. Way cool. Hey, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the 5x5, sorry, I'm sorry, I don't have a link for you. Um, if you want to go to my website, it's bluesguitarunleashed.com. Um, uh, there is a link at the top of that that says course catalog. And in that course catalog is every different uh, either learning course or jam tracks and solos. I, ha I have lots of different things there. Um, and all of them are, are things that you can... Uh, take a look at and and you know the five by five jam tracks are towards the bottom of that page uh, so that that might help you uh, let me see if I can get rid of that <laughs> can't believe it worked <laughs> I'm getting a little better I'm getting a little better um, let's see uh, I see I have a couple of gear questions um, are there exercises for your fingers to get them to move around a little easier there's a lot of them. Um, that's probably a topic for another day. I, there's not a lot that you need. There's just a couple. Uh, the main thing is is can you when you if you if you play the first four notes on your guitar, can you get both your first finger and your pinky on on the fretboard at the same time? And if you can't, if you can't have all four fingers down there. It probably means that your thumb is pointed towards the back of the neck, and when your thumb is pointed towards the back of the neck, it makes the hand collapse. And I can't do it either. And I don't have big hands. This is not about having big big hands. So it's just a matter of getting all four fingers down there. So it, it, it means you have to drop your wrist. You know, you have to get the guitar in such a place where you can drop the wrist, get the thumb uh, in a reasonable location. I hope you can see that. Kind of in the middle, pointing up, not pointing back. That's the short answer. Um, I have other videos uh, about technique. Um, you could probably search and find them. Uh, let's see. Do I think an EQ pedal can alter my tone more than swapping pickups? An EQ pedal definitely has the, the potential to, to alter tone way more than, than pickups do, yes. Um, I got a Fender American Special Strat for Christmas. How much fret buzz is normal? Uh, that you know, it's different for everybody. I don't mind a little fret buzz. In fact, uh, yeah, somebody felt compelled to <laughs> point out with a rather snide comment how the fret buzz made the video unwatchable for him the other day. Uh, there's always one, but uh, no, I don't. I don't mind a little bit of fret buzz. I don't. I don't run my action that low. I, I actually like a little bit of space in there because I do like to hit it. <laughs> that kind of stuff so um, sorry got something uh, so I, I, I like the action a little higher which of course makes the fret buzz less it depends partially on how hard you hit it um, and, and it's personal taste if if it's buzzing and you don't dig it I would take it somebody for sure um, uh, let's see hey guys uh, what I mean drop your wrist I mean so let's see so if you look at my guitar we have like classical, the classical technique here is sort of to, to my wrist is pointing down, right? I have a monitor up there in case you wonder what I'm staring at so I can see what you see. Um, so right now, my guitar, if you, if you were to like sit up really, really straight and hold your guitar up really high like this, it would be super easy to play because you have all kinds of room. As you get the guitar lower, it gets harder and harder to play because you have... Your, your wrist tends to have to go back. It can't go down. So when I say drop your wrist, I mean, I almost kind of mean raise your guitar. And if that's something I'll, I'll definitely, you know, all these questions that are, that are I'll say, a little bit deeper, uh, they, they'll make great topics for, for other days. So um, uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Scott. Um, 
and and then for you asking about the Nace amps, uh, my friend Art Nace makes those amps. Uh, he used to produce them regularly. Unfortunately, has has stopped doing that. But uh, I love them. They're they're great. Uh, Kevin, I occasionally do private lessons, although my schedule is pretty full. I I do still do them. It's just it's just hard to find time. Um, uh, I have used a Beat Buddy drum pedal. Yes, I don't use it very often, but I do have one. Uh, I thought it was a pretty cool uh, <laughs> a pretty cool thing. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Looks like I need a new amp. No, I don't really need a new amp. I got plenty. Thank you. Um, let's see. Played as a right-handed. So, yeah, so I grab a boom. Let's alternate. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, so the question is about switching from right to left-handed uh, due to a tremor is what it looks like. Um, I have seen people do that. Uh, I, it's definitely possible. Um, in fact, I was having this conversation earlier today with somebody um, that, you know, like for a new guitar player who comes to me, I always tell them, play right-handed, even if they're left-handed. Because when you first start, neither hand knows what to do. It, it really doesn't make any difference in my experience. So I'll, I'll always suggest go to a right-handed guitar, even if you're left-handed, because playing a guitar isn't, doesn't really matter. Whatever you get used to, you're, you're going to get used to. Um, and it'll save you a lot of money down the road having to buy left-handed guitars. So I see no reason why you couldn't switch if you were so inclined. Um, it, it, you know, I don't know how long it'll take because I don't know how well you play now. I don't know that journey for you, but it's, you know, it's kind of like me when I sit down to play the piano. I know the notes that I'm supposed to play. My techniques just can't do it yet. It's a little bit frustrating, admittedly, because I know what I want to play. I just can't get it to come out. So you may have that frustration a little bit. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, the thickness style and brand of pick. Uh, these are Jim Dunlop Jazz 3 picks. They're a little slightly smaller and rather thick. I don't know the, the thickness. I want to say like 1.1 or 1.4 millimeter. But they're a little bit smaller. I just, I like the sound of them, actually. The difference between a lick and a phrase, there really isn't one, I don't think. Um, and, uh, oh good, I'm glad that, I'm glad you, uh, did the trading force. Thanks, David. Very good. Very good. Okay. So, anyway, I should probably wrap up for the moment. It looks like, uh, looks like I've answered most of the, uh, most of the questions. Thanks for joining me today. This was fun. And, uh, remember, if, if you do struggle with the 12 bar blues, please, 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 please take that time, count it out. Just keep working on that and, and play music with it. Grab jam tracks. There's gobs and gobs and gobs of jam tracks out there. Grab a jam track. Play along. Play, you can try just playing along with, you know, like I turn on Pandora, you know, Blues Radio, Albert King, Stevie Ray Vaughan, whatever, you know, whatever you like. A lot of them are going to be standard blues, and you can play along. Don't, you know, you just kind of hunt till you find a chord that sounds good and, and just go for it. it. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. You're just having fun with it. Okay? So, again, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me. I, uh, Gentleman Jack time. Amen, brother. I like that. <laughs> Some of you may know I'm a Gentleman Jack fan. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to head out and uh, get back to editing some other videos and stuff for you all. But uh, take care, and I'll talk to you soon.